In this section, we're going to be talking about polynomial and rational inequalities. Okay. All right, so let's see. In this section, we will solve inequalities that involve polynomials of degree three and higher, along with inequalities that involve rational functions. To help understand the algebraic procedure for solving such inequalities, we use the information obtained in the previous three sections about the graph of a polynomial and rational function. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to look at problems where we're solving these inequalities using graphing, and then I will also show you how to solve these types of problems algebraically. Okay. All right, so our first example says solve x plus 3 times x minus 1 squared is greater than 0 by graphing f of x equals x plus 3 times x minus 1 squared. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do, because in this section they're going to give you polynomial functions and they're also going to give you rational functions. Okay, so you have to determine what function you've been given because eventually they're all going to be mixed up together. So remember, a rational function is anything that looks like a fraction, okay? And remember, polynomial functions, they don't look like fractions. They have no denominator, and they have positive powers um, and powers that don't equal fractions, okay? So this initial problem that we've been given, it's a polynomial. All right, so if they want us to solve it by graphing, that means we're going to graph this function first. So eventually they're just going to have you, they're just going to give you the function and tell you to graph it, okay? So you're always going to look at this part without the inequality sign in order to graph it, okay? Another thing that you want to make sure that you do before you start these problems is that the inequality has to have zero on one side of it, okay? So our inequality is already set up like that. If it isn't, you need to move everything over to one side so that zero is on one side of your inequality, okay? All right, so we looked at graphing polynomials before, okay? So there's a couple of things we need to know. So let's write our problem, f of x equals x plus 3, x minus 1 squared, okay? So the first thing I want to look at is the degree of the function. All right, so if I were to multiply this completely out, this would be x times x squared, which would give me x cubed. Okay, and the leading coefficient of this function would be positive. All right, so we know that since this is a, a third degree polynomial and the leading coefficient is positive, if they asked us for the end behavior, remember we talked about those two type of behaviors, a snake or a parabola. This would be a snake that rises from left to right because it's odd degreed and its leading coefficient is positive. Okay. All right. The next thing we want to look at is the number of turning points. Okay. So remember, turning points is equal to the degree of the function minus one. So our degree, which we determine, is three. Okay. So we have three minus one, which is two. So we should have two turning points on this function. Okay. All right, the next thing we're going to determine are the intercepts, okay? So remember our real zeros are the same thing as our x-intercepts, okay? And to find x-intercept, you set y equal to 0. So we're going to have 0 equals x plus 3 times x minus 1 squared. All right, so it's already factored for us, so I'm going to set each one of those factors equal to 0 and solve for x. All right, so I have two x-intercepts, negative 3 and 1, okay? As coordinates, that would be negative 3, 0, and 1, 0, okay? Um, the next intercepts I need to find are my y-intercepts. Remember, to find y-intercepts, you're going to set x equal to 0. All right, so that's going to give us f of 0, 0 plus 3, 
zero minus one squared. So that's gonna give me three times negative one squared, three times one, which is three. So I have one y-intercept at zero, three, okay? Now the other thing we're gonna to have to remember to do is we need to know the behavior at the zeros, okay? Because that's gonna help us graph. Okay, and if you guys remember the way that we determine the behavior at the real zeros, we look at the multiplicity. Okay, if the multiplicity is even, remember your graph is gonna touch the x-axis at that point. If your multiplicity is odd, your function is going to cross the x-axis at that point. So as I'm looking at my x-intercepts that I found, when I'm looking at the multiplicity, okay, the multiplicity is the degree on the factor where the zero came from. So negative three came from this factor where the degree is one. So its multiplicity is one. One is odd. So that means the graph is going to cross here, okay? All right, if I look at one, if I'm looking at the multiplicity, it's the degree on the factor where the zero came from. So in this case, it would be two. Two is even. So that means our graph is going to touch the x-axis at that point, okay? So we found the degree, the end behavior, the real zeros, um, the y-intercepts, and the behavior at the zeros, okay? So we can graph it. We're gonna put all of this information together, okay? Now, if you guys remember, graphs of polynomial functions, All right, had to satisfy two conditions. They had to be smooth, and they also had to be continuous, okay? Which meant that our graph had no gaps or holes, no corners or cusp, and we could draw it without lifting up our pencil from the paper, okay? So let's put all of this together. Let's see if I can change this. All right, so I'm going to draw a coordinate system. And I'm going to label all the information that I found. So I have x-intercepts at negative 3, 0. And 1, 0. And I have a y-intercept at 3. OK. And my end behavior is a rising snake. So I'm going to draw these little arrows to let me know which way I'm going. All right, now I'm going to fill in my graph moving from left to right using the information that I have. All right, so let's change the color. Okay, so we know when we get to, let me label these for you guys. All right, so this point is negative three, zero. One, zero. Okay. So our graph said when, well, our work said that when we get to negative three, we should cross the x-axis at that point. Okay. So I know that I'm a rising snake. So as I come to negative three, I should physically cross over the x-axis. Okay. And then I said when I get to one, I should touch the x-axis. Okay. So I'm going to go through the y-intercept come down at one touch and bounce back up, okay? All right, so that's smooth and continuous. It has no corners or cusps, okay? Or no gaps or any holes. So we said we should have two turning points. We do, and it's a rising snake, all right? Now, we're solving an inequality, so we just wanted to graph our function, but we're actually trying to answer a question. So the inequality that we've been given is this x plus 3, x minus 1 squared is greater than 0, okay? So your inequality is either going to have um, <clears throat> one of four signs. So we have greater than, okay? So if your inequality includes a greater than or greater than or equal to sign, okay, you are looking at the part of the graph that sits above the x-axis. All right.
if your inequality has a less than or a less than or equal to sign, you're interested in the part of the graph that sits below the x-axis, okay? So that doesn't hinder you from graphing it or anything. It's just it affects your answer, how you answer it, okay? So because our inequality, okay, has greater than, we are interested in the part that is above the x-axis, okay? So we go over to our picture, and we're going to look at the intervals where our graph sits above the x-axis. So that would be here, and it would be this part, okay? Because those are the parts that sit above the x-axis. So when we write our answers, typically we're going to write them in interval notation. All right. So when we describe these intervals, we're going to write them in terms of the x values. Okay. So if I want to describe what's happening in this hump, if you want to call it, of the graph, that hump starts at negative 3 and it ends at 1. Okay. And I'm going to put it in parentheses because our inequality symbol is greater than. It doesn't have the equal to sign underneath it. So I'm going to put in parentheses. Then I'm going to say union. And then I'm going to write the other part. So the other part is from 1 to positive infinity. So parentheses, 1, positive infinity. So I just told them, well, I graphed this polynomial, and these are the parts where it is greater than 0. Okay. All right, so let me show you how to solve this same problem analytically, okay? So if you are trying to solve these problems analytically, you can always graph them, but sometimes they don't require you to graph them. So let's kind of go through the steps. Cool, all right? All right, so if they ask you to solve one of these problems analytically, okay, the steps that you're going to follow are these. So step one, you're going to write the inequality so that a polynomial or rational expression f is on the left side and zeros on the right side in one of the following forms. So depending on what your inequality symbol, you're either going to look like the first one, the second one, the third one, or the fourth one. Just depends. Okay. For rational expressions, be sure that the left side is written as a single quotient. Okay. This means that it should look like a single fraction. Okay. Like it should only have one. All right, and then you're going to find the domain. Step two says to determine the real numbers at which the expression f equals zero, and if the expression is rational, the real numbers at which the expression f is undefined. Step three, you're going to use the numbers found in step two to separate the real number line into intervals. And then step four, you're going to select a number in each interval and evaluate f at that number. So A, if the value of f is positive, then f of x is greater than 0 for all numbers x in that interval. B says if the value of f is negative, then f of x is less than 0 for all numbers x in that interval. And if the inequality is not strict, which means it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you're going to include the solutions of f of x equals 0 and are in the domain of f in the solution set. So to be careful to exclude values of x where f is undefined. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we do the exact same problem we did, but analytically, okay? All right, so if I'm doing this same problem analytically, okay, it says that our um, polynomial function or rational function needs to be on the left-hand side and zero needs to be on the right-hand side of the inequality. So the original problem that they gave us, it's already set up like that. So we don't have to move anything or manipulate anything. It's already set to go, okay? Then the step says to find the real zeros, okay? So if we find the real zeros for a polynomial, that's the same thing as finding the x-intercepts. So we did that already when we used this step. When we found the real zeros, okay, we set y equal to zero, and we solved and we got negative 3, and we solved the other one, and we got 1, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to set up the number line, okay? So this is where we're going to get into the number line that they were talking about. Okay, so if I draw a number line, I'm going to put my real zeros on this number line the way that they would naturally occur. So negative 3 is smaller, so I'm going to put it first, and then 1 is my other one, okay? Now, when I do that, it creates intervals, okay? So this interval would be from negative infinity to negative 3, 
This would be from negative three to one, and this would be one to infinity, okay? So it says then once you set up your intervals, you need to choose test points. It doesn't matter what you choose, you just need to choose something that actually falls in that interval. So for this one, I think I'm gonna choose negative four. Here, I think I'll choose negative one. Here, I'll choose two, okay? Then it says, once I've chosen those values, I need to plug them into the inequality and see if I get a true statement. Either I'm going to get a positive value or I'm going to get a negative value, okay? Let's change the color. All right, so I'm going to plug in negative 4 into this inequality that I originally had. So that's negative 4 plus 3, negative 4 minus 1 squared, and is that greater than 0? Okay, so negative four plus three, that's negative one. That's negative five squared is greater than zero. That's negative one times 25. And that's negative 25. And is that greater than zero? No, that's false. Okay, so that's not true. I don't want that answer. Okay, and negative 25 lets me know that this is going to be below the x-axis, which I don't want because my inequality is interested in where we're positive or where we're above the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing with my other test points. So I have negative 1 plus 3, negative 1 minus 1, greater than 0. So that's 2, negative 2 squared is greater than 0, 2 times four greater than zero, that's eight is greater than zero. That's true, eight is greater than zero. So I like that region, okay? All right, the positive number lets me know that I'm above the x-axis. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing with my last test point. So I'm gonna have two plus three, two minus one squared is greater than zero. It's five. 1 squared is greater than 0, 5 is greater than 0, all right, so uh, that's true, and the positive number lets me know that I'm above the x-axis, okay, so once I've done my test points, I only want to include the intervals in my answer that made my inequality true, so for this problem, it was the second interval and the third interval. So when I go to write my answer, I'm going to write those intervals, negative 3 to 1, union 1 to infinity. And I'm keeping my endpoints in parentheses because my inequality was just greater than, okay? It wasn't greater than or equal to, so I'm not going to change them to brackets, okay? And as you can see, we get the same answer that we got when we graphed it. So it's really up to you. If your question prompt doesn't tell you to graph it, you don't have to. You can always solve it algebraically, um, and you can always solve it algebraically to check yourself. But you have two methods. Either you can graph it or solve it algebraically. Cool?